Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 13 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to do the last of the simplistic things to learn about inside of Java. Everything after this is going to be a lot more complicated. Today, we're going to focus on strings and string builders. And I have just the basics laid out here that, of course, you understand. And up here, I'm importing my arrays library because I got to use that a little bit later on. So let's just jump right into it. And I'm going to start off very, very simple. Some of the stuff you're already going to know, and then we're going to get into more complicated things as we go on. All the different methods available are all going to be presented here. So this is how you create a string and make sure you surround the, all of your strings that you create with quotes and not apostrophes. Very important. Put apostrophes around characters and not strings. So there you are. Just created a string. Of course, you know that. And there, of course, is an apostrophe. So let's go ahead and let's talk about escape codes. So let's say you want to create another string and you have to use a quote inside of it for whatever reason. So let's say you're going to put he said, which would be a good situation where you'd have to do that. Well, if you want to put a quote inside of here, you have to put a backslash and then the quote. You can just go in here and I'm here. That's all fine and dandy. And then, of course, if you want to put in another one, you just put a backslash and another quote. So that's how you would do that. And common escape codes are new lines and then you have things like backspaces and then you have apostrophes, of course, because you've seen that already. And then you also have your quotes, which you've seen already. And then also backslash. You'd have to backslash the backslash. Otherwise, it would get confused. Used. If you want to combine strings, of course, you know how to do this. Just you know, print line. We've already done that 50 million times. And you could do this in any different number of ways. Let's just put random string inside of here. Put a little space inside of there. Plus, and got to quote. So that's one way that you could go and print out that to screen. And there you can see I actually printed it out screen on the right side of the screen. And of course you could do print primitives. So let's just create an integer and let's just call it num2 is equal to 2. And you could easily come in here and put num2 in there instead of that. And that's going to print out num2 just like that. So there you can use primitives. You can use anything inside of strings to print this stuff out. Really simple, simple stuff. Well, actually in the first part of this video tutorial, I showed you how to convert primitive types. And those would be bytes, shorts, ints, longs, floats, doubles, and booleans in combination with first byte, dot, to string. Depending upon the primitive, you're going to have to put a different type of thing in here. So short, you want to convert a short to a string, you have to put short, dot, to string. And all the codes available underneath the video, it'll really, really help you understand a little bit better if you go and download that. And of course, it's all free. And if you want to convert from a string to a primitive, you have to use the applicable integer for this situation and then parse int. And you can see all those different things here. Just make sure if you want to do a parse long, again, this is to convert a string into a primitive, you're going to put long dot parse long. So that's how that all works. And you've seen that in the past in previous tutorials and other explanations. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Now we're going to create a couple more strings here. So let's go uppercase string is equal to and let's type in big like that. And let's create another string and it will be called lowercase string. And I'm going to put big in there, except it's going to be lower clay. Now, if I want to do a comparison between different strings, let's just do this with an if statement. I can go uppercase str, and I can type in equals, the equals method. And then if I want to compare it to another string, which is an object, as you can see here, Eclipse is saying, hey, I expect an object here. Well, I'm just going to type in that. And let's go and scroll that up. And let's print out a message. They are equal, which they are not because, and you can see that it's just not going to print out anything. And the reason why is equals pays attention to uppercase and lowercase. So these two things, as far as equals is concerned, are not equal because this is uppercase letters and this is lowercase letters. However, if you wanted to ignore case, you just change this to ignore case. Use a different method. And in this situation, they are going to print out. As you see, they're equal. So that's two different ways to do equality comparisons between strings. Create a couple more strings here. All right, created two strings there. I want to do some more manipulations on these guys. So if I wanted to find out what character is at a specific index, and just like arrays, everything in a string is its own index value. So A, 0, B is 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So I can go in there and find out what exact character is in what specific position. So let's just print that guy out. So I can do something like a uh, second character like that. And then if I want to find out based off of the letter string, what character is at a specific index position, I type in the character at method and it will tell me exactly what that is. And you can get these characters and use them in other ways other than just printing them to the screen. And as you can see, I printed that out. 
There's numerous different ways to do pretty much everything inside of here. And you could also do a compare to. So let's go in here and type in letters, compare to. That is another method for you. And let's compare it to more letters and see what happens. And then I'll explain exactly what is going on here. It prints out a negative five. And the reason why is compare to, if the strings are equal, is going to print out a zero. If, however, when comparing these two strings, and they're comparing them based off of alphabetical order. Okay, so that's what Java is doing here. In the situation in which letters, which is A, B, C, D, E, comes before more letters in the compare to method here. See, it's that's how it's comparing letters to more letters. So if letters comes before more letters, you're going to get yourself a negative number, which is what happened right there. And it also makes sense since this is A, B, C, D, E, and this is F, G, H, I, J, K. In alphabetical order, that's how it's playing around there. However, if letters comes after more letters, you're going to get yourself a positive number. That is how the compare to function works. If you want to check whether a string contains certain things, no problem. You just type in letters and type in contains. If we wanted to find out if that string contained ABC, of course, we're going to be able to find that with that new awesome method. And there it is. True comes back, so you know you, you get a Boolean value. You could also check if letters ends with a specific number of characters. Pretty simple. So let's see if it ends with DE. And we know it does, so there's no real point in even printing that out. And also, just like ends with, there's a starts with method that's available, and it's just gonna tell you, does the string start with whatever number of characters you put in there? So there's no real point going over that. You could also find out the starting index position for a certain number of characters inside of a string, right like that. And you can see that it's gonna print out those different values. And you're also gonna see what ends with, say ends with DE, which it does, so it prints out true. And then here, index of CD, and it's kicking back two. And the reason why is this is zero, one, two. C is index value two. So that's another way to look at these different guys. And you can also specify the index to start searching from in that situation, and that is with index of, you type in the string to look for and the index start position. So if you wanted to start searching after the third character, you would come in here and type in what would actually be two, but you would type in the index position to start searching from and then the string you are looking for. And of course you could also use last index of and it works just like the index of except it starts from the end of the string you are searching instead of from the beginning of that string. So as you can see, there's a kind of a lot of duplication in some of these methods. That's why I'm not bothering to go through all of them. Now, if you want to return the number of characters in a string, of course, that's also very easy to use. And I'm typing in length right here. And I think you can guess that that's probably what it's going to do. So you type in letters and you type in length. And that's going to kick back the actual number of characters in the string. And you can see here, length is five. And that's exactly right. Then also, if you wanted to replace certain different characters, like for instance, let's say you wanted to replace ABC with XY. So it doesn't have to be the same number of characters. Here I'm replacing these three characters with these two characters. You would use the replace function to do that. And as you can see, that's exactly what it did. It replaced the ABC with the two characters X and Y. And we can delete some of these things here. We don't need them. Another thing you can do is create a string array using the split method. So let's go string and I'm just going to call this letter array. It's equal to and then we can just go letters dot split. And then inside of here, you have to, it's going to pop up regex, which stands for regular expressions. We'll get later into that. But what we're going to do here is you have to provide a delimiter is what it's called. In this situation, I'm just going to put a delimiter as nothing. And that just means how do you want to divide these characters up? That is all that means. So in this situation, we don't have any space between these letters. But let's say everything was divided by a comma. So you have A comma B comma C in this situation. Well, in in that situation, the delimiter, if you wanted to divide all the characters up, would be a comma. Then what it's going to do is it's going to put A, B, and C all in separate compartments inside of an array. Now you can put anything inside of here. Like I said, a regular expression will allow you to do really, really funky, crazy, awesome thing. But in this situation, we're just going to stick with this basic concept. So in this situation, I'm basically saying I want everything to be divided up into separate spaces. And let's go and we'll split all this different stuff up. So let's just type in letter array. And then if I want to print an array out the screen, I'm going to go arrays dot to string. And you've seen this guy in the past, right like that. And you can see it printed out the array. 
A, B, C, D, E right there on your screen. Now, that's not exactly what you wanted to look for because it, see, it actually put a little space in here for what precedes A, and, you know, it just doesn't quite look right. So what you want to actually do in that situation, I mean, it's not common that you're going to be separating different characters together. However, if you would want to put those characters in different compartments, let's create a character array and do pretty much the same sort of thing, except we're going to go letters to care. And now it's going to provide us more of what we're looking for. As you can see, it printed out right there. So it just separate all the different characters and put them all in separate compartments. Another neat thing you can do is actually get different parts of the string to print out the screen using a substring function. So we'll just go letters dot substring. And yes, in this situation, for some god awful reason, they decided to not go and put an uppercase inside of there. And let's say you wanted to start at the second index, which in, as you know, is one, and you wanted to go through the fourth one and you wanted to print that out the screen. That's exactly how that's done. And as you can see, it prints out BCD. And then you could also force this to be displayed as uppercase just by putting the uh, two uppercase method right inside of there and then of course there's also a two lowercase which is going to force it into lowercase mode let's go in here and create another string and we'll call it ran string is equal to and i'm going to throw a whole bunch of white space into this there's just a whole bunch of extra stuff there now if you wanted to get rid of this white space it's real simple let's just take ran string and call the trim method on it. And that's exactly what it's gonna do. It's gonna delete all the white space at the beginning and the end, not inside of the string itself. Now, whenever you're dealing with strings, I'm gonna throw kind of a big word at you. A string is what is known as an immutable. And what that means is every single time you change a string in any way, it doesn't delete the previous version of that string in memory. What it does is it creates a brand new location in memory for the string over and over and over and over again. Now, this is kind of time consuming. So if you're planning on making a ton of different edits to a string, you should use what's called a string builder because a string builder basically gets a block of memory and it continues to use it and it doesn't recreate the string over and over and over and over again. But other than that, they're very, very similar. So if you want to create a string builder, you just type in string builder and let's just go rand sb and then you just type in new string builder. Right like that and let's just give it a, a random value literally okay now i'm going to show you a whole bunch of methods you can do okay so if you want to for example append something to the end of a string builder this is how you're going to do that just going to type in rand sb because that's the name of my string builder and call the append let's come in here throw another string in let's just type in again and you can see that it prints out a random value again it appends that extra information onto the screen and just so you know this, that change that we just made right there is not just for that line of code. It actually makes a permanent change to this string builder. See, the again part is still there because I've gotten questions about, you know, exactly what's going on there. And if you want to delete certain information inside of here, well, you know, there's a delete method. And let's say we want to delete from 15 to say 21, which is in essence going to delete the again part that you just added with the append. And you can see it did that. Now, remember before I said, whenever you create a string builder, what it in essence is doing is providing you a certain amount of space in memory. Well, if you want to find out how much space, and that space constantly changes based off of any changes you make to the string. Well, you can call the capacity function. Capacity function is going to tell you how much total space you have in memory. And it is allocating you currently 30 characters worth of space inside of your string. And if you wanted to increase that size, what you just do is type in again your string builder. And then you type in ensure capacity. And you say, how many characters do you want? And they're typed in 60. So now if I call this capacity function again, it's going to print out 60 instead of what I've had before. So let's just cut that out of there. And you can see it provided me with 62 characters worth of space. What ensure capacity does is it guarantees it's going to be at least 60 in size. However, it could be bigger than that. Now, if you wanted to be able to come in here and find out what the length, meaning the number of characters that are actually inside of the string, you call the length function, just like we do with strings. And you can see the difference between length and capacity. However, if you wanted to trim the size of the capacity down to the actual size of the string, you call trim to size, and that is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to make sure that your capacity is equal to your length. And you can see that now the capacity is equal to length, 15 and 15. So there's a way to force it to do whichever you want.
And again, these are for string builders, what we're doing here. If you wanted to insert a certain string or anything, starting at a specific index. So let's say if after I want to change the word A into another. What I would do is I say I want to start at index one and I want to put on another after that. That's exactly how I do that with the insert method. Another random value, as you can see, I just went and put it right inside of there, real easy. And if you wanted to create a string, old SB, just call the to string method. And that's going to convert your string builder into a string. And rather than repeat myself, string builders also have a lot of the same functions as strings, such as character at. It works exactly the same for a string builder as it does for a string. And then index of also works exactly the same. And last index of works exactly the same. And substring also works exactly the same. So there's a whole bunch of things about strings and string builders. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.